You stole my joke. I will fill your shoes with spoiled tapioca pudding. Tapioca? I hardly know one. You fool! I already fill my shoes with spoiled tapioca pudding. Your threat means nothing to me, mere mortal. You think I care that you did my work for me? You now walking in shoes filled with pudding and your socks completely slimy. Each step comes with a squish sound followed by a squelch as you raise your foot up. This is the outcome I wanted. Congratulations, you played yourself. Also, since the pudding is spoiled, it smells pretty bad. You fool! The wretched smell that you describe only affects the weak. But I, me immortal, have the power of infinite mortals. Thus, this smell means nothing to me. As for the squish and squelch sounds you speak of, they shall make you feel intimidated. My mere mortal, you will always be in my presence, and you shall fear greatly about this. Perchance I may spare you, but only if I feel like it. Beware me, mortal, for I'm arriving at your location very, very soon. Yes, but what about the now slimy socks? That was my main goal, and it's still all on you. And the sounds do give away your presence, making it easier to jump you if you can even find my location. But I accept your challenge. If you're truly brave enough to come to me, if we do meet, you best be prepared with your tapioca-filled shoes. Because if you falter for not but a moment, you will be shoved into a tuba, and I will use your crumpled body to enhance my music. For I may in fact be a mere mortal, but if you have the multiplicative power of infinite mortals, all the dead is zero power, making you less than mortal. It is a challenge that I shall accept, my mere mortal. Your tuba literally means nothing to me, for I've already been shoved into a trombone thrice this week alone! The brass makes me even more powerful, my mere mortal. As for the slime, it means nothing to me as well, for its stickiness shall better allow me to run all over your walls, causing a major mess to your house and your dignity. You have already lost before we have even begun, my mere mortal. You may hear me, but by hearing me, you only seal your inevitable fate. Try if you must, but you shall fail. You are nothing but a fool, my mere mortal. Very well. You shall know when it is time. Your posturing cannot save you, for my ambivalence is my shield. I am more than ready to teach you the power of a mortal. Are you ready to learn? I do not need your negligible lessons, my mere mortal, for I have mastered all that you have learned centuries before your very conception. Your shield, your thick. Time will end and the universe will explode, but I, my mere mortal, shall last beyond the realms of time and space. You are in only the third dimension, my mere mortal, but I am in the three million and third dimension. I can burn your heart and soul and being to flames in mere femtoseconds. You stand no match, my mere mortal. It seems that all this time has not taught you brevity. For if you were truly as learned as you claim, you would know that there is always more to learn. This arrogance shall be your undoing. We shall see, my mere mortal, whether my words are of the arrogance you wish they are, or the truth that you refuse to understand. When we meet again, our battle will be legendary. Finally, something we can agree on. The battle will be won for the books. Be on guard! You two are strange. 